The question that I have today, friends, is can you manifest love? This is Deja. Welcome back to the What Were You Saying podcast, a place where we have conversations with regular people and we ask and answer the questions about life, love, and everything in between that we all have and find the magic in our everyday reality. To kick us off, I have a question that I would love for you to answer. Do you think we can manifest love? Why or why not? And this question comes as a result of one of my mutuals, Chef Steve Pagonis, asking the question, do you really think manufacturing a soulful connection will work? Isn't that the irony of love inclusive of the word? It's independent of the random circumstances in which that it's found. This is a very good question. I wanna say thank you so much for this. I love it, love it, love it. When I receive questions that kind of make me think or challenge my own worldview, uh, push me to stretch and think, hey, do I believe that? Or, hey, I know that I believe this before. Is this something that I still believe? So thank you for that. A little bit of context for this question. I had made a post on my Instagram. And in this post, I was sharing about how I had manifested everything in my life up until this point. And for some reason, it never occurred to me to manifest the type of love or the type of relationship that I wanted and that it somehow felt desperate. And it's like, well, why? Why should being very intentional with the type of love that you want, easily one of the most important relationships that you can have, why would you not be intentional about that? Why would you leave that up to chance or run the risk of, you know, thinking that you need something else because you're not actually clear on what you want and then missing out when what you need is actually presented in front of you, but you don't even know it yet. Well, how strange it was that I had spent so much of my lifetime or so much of my conscious adult time manifesting the life that I wanted. You know, it was five, almost five years ago where I sat down and I locked myself in a room with a piece of paper and I literally mapped out who I wanted to be in five years. What type of clothes did I want her to wear? What type of friends did I want her to have? What type of friend did I want her to be I mapped out everything to the point where I I want for nothing in my life I have beautiful friends I have mended relationships with my family members I have developed a community on Instagram where I'm able to show up and be vulnerable and I hope that I'm able or at least the goal is to foster a space like that for other people so I'm also being of service in that way and finding fulfillment and meaning in doing that so it's I felt pretty pretty good whereas you know when I started the exercise of trying to like really manifest the life that I wanted I was absolutely miserable like legitimately (laughs) legitimately miserable I remember crying way more than I was like not crying and yo-yo dieting and binge eating and over drinking and just doing things that were sabotaging and kamikazing my life when it finally blew its head it was like something's got to give you know something's got to give but the point of me even sharing that is the thought process that I now have the life that I have wanted that I couldn't possibly do. My life is so sweet. I cannot even take it in sometimes. I'm so incredibly grateful. But it never occurred to me to manifest love. Like it never occurred to me to take a step back and say, okay, hey, what does your future husband look like? You know, what does that partnership look like? Like I was so focused on just, you know, getting right spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. And I say right because that's very like subjective, right? Like right Right to someone else is not the same as <laughs> as right to everyone else. I completely, I'm completely aware of that. But it, I, it had to be what was best for my unique individual life. I'm at a point now where I feel pretty solid. The post was saying, you know, I've manifested everything in my life, and why didn't it occur to me sooner to manifest the type of relationship that I wanted? I'm in a relationship now after years of being single, years minus like a brief six month stint. That honestly, looking back. Now, I don't really feel like it was a relationship. I legitimately feel like it was like my final boss battle before the universe was like, I'm gonna give you what you want, but I need to know that you're not willing to sell yourself out. I need to know that you're ready for what is about to be bestowed upon you. So I feel like that kind of was like a final boss battle. Uh, But outside of that, I've been pretty much single this entire time since I moved to the South. I hadn't been in like a legitimate relationship or anything like that. I had a situationship that lasted far too long with a beautiful man with a mullet. Don't ask me these types of questions. Just know that he was very beautiful and it was 
insanely toxic. <laughs> and I stayed single for the rest of the time. And just put my head down and, and worked on, you know, feeling good about myself. It's like, why wouldn't you also be that intentional? When I say how intentional I was, guys, with creating a vision and manifesting the life that I wanted, I have journals where I literally wrote down, make wedding invitation worthy friends. Like that was a thing that I wrote down. And you know, the first time I got a wedding invite, I cried. And then the second time I got one, I cried. And then the third time I got invited to one, I was in a wedding and it was just like, wow, like I've, I've, I've done this. So I've, I've been that specific with stuff. <laughs> So why would I not also be that specific? Everything that I have ever put on my vision board or visioned for myself has happened. I saw in my mind's eye, me skating in the shade of the Eiffel Tower months, maybe even a, like a year or two before it happened. I could see it clearly. I could see myself getting out of bed and hitting my alarm clock and getting dressed and stealing away like a thief in the night and getting on a scooter and riding to the Eiffel Tower before dawn. Like I saw it played out in my brain and I was like, I knew that this is what's going to happen and this is what it will look like. Like I knew this. So it's like, why would you not also apply that same intention to your relationships? My ADHD has gone off tangent, but the point <laughs> was, you know, why wouldn't I manifest the type of love or relationship that I wanted? My relationship is still very new. I'm still like in the, the honeymoon, you know, gaining happy relationship weight part <laughs> of the equation. But it, this feels very different in the sense that it feels very conscious. And I think the reason why it feels very different is because when I got serious about, okay, I think I'm ready to be in a relationship or I don't even think it occurred to me like I'm ready to be in a relationship. I think it was more so like, you've gone as far as you can go. <laughs> and that's not to say like you need a relationship, but I think that a relationship can teach you things or present flaws or ways that you might be holding yourself back that you wouldn't really have clarity into unless there was another person like in your shit all the time. So I think the ability for you to grow in a relationship is insane. But also I feel like I've spent, you know, the past five years cultivating this like well of love with inside me and it feels very good to like pour that love into another person the same way that i poured it into all of the other areas of my life it feels good to nourish that area but i remember when i made the decision to say okay hey you know what? i'm ready to like put childish things away and i'm ready to stop being this manic pixie dream girl who is just flittering from you know these beautiful places never allowing anybody to get close to her and filming all of it and having like all of these beautiful adventures that I can look back on, but then realize that like, that's all that I have to keep me warm are these beautiful adventures. I think that's like the curse of this time. I won't say our generation, cause I'm definitely a millennial, but I feel like we're a part of it. This time where we are this generation with such pretty pictures and such pretty videos. And yet somehow we are like, incredibly lonely, incredibly lonely. There was this part of my life where I think that that's what I needed because I didn't trust myself to be a good person or a good partner to someone, so I stayed single. I stayed single because it was like, I don't know this about myself. As a result of that, my manic pixie dream girl was born. She kind of protected me from getting close to anybody because I was never in a position to be like vulnerable with anyone. So once I made the decision to kind of like lay her to rest, why would I not put this on my board? Why would I not put what I want in a relationship, what I'm looking for, so that if I were to come across it, there is no doubt, there is no hesitation, there is no getting hung up on minor inconveniences because I know what the priority for me. You know, it's really hard to get hung up on somebody's chewing when you have clearly outlined the list of what you are, want in a partner and this person hits everything. It's real easy to overlook shit like chewing or like, ugh, my boyfriend like will listen to Lil Wayne for hours on end in the car, like lit nothing else, four hour drive. And that's like overstimulating for me. But then it's like, you know what? This man is romantic. He is kind, he's thoughtful, he's supportive. <laughs> like. All right, let him listen to Lil Wayne, whatever. <laughs> like what? Like all your needs are met, girl, all of them. Like you're not settling in any arena. You can listen to Lil Wayne. I feel like when you get clear on your vision, it makes it easy for you to recognize that. So the question that <laughs> 
Chef Steve asked me that I want to ask of you, I'd love for you guys to share your thoughts in the comments is, do you really think that manufacturing a soulful connection will work? So I wanna ask that question to you guys. Do you guys think that you can manifest love or do you consider that manufactured? The answer that I gave was that I think that there's a difference between manufacturing and manifesting. To me, when I think of manufacturing, I think of trying to force a situation out of like loneliness or desperation. You know, you're like, oh, my clock is ticking and I'm just gonna ignore all of these red flags because I want this. Versus for me, manifesting is everything that I want is at top of mind so that I'm not missing out. I think that a lot of people happen to meet their soulmates at one point in time and because they're not ready physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually for that, they pass by each other like two ships in a night. And I think when you manifest or that you visualize the things that you want, it makes it so that when doors open or close, you are keenly tuned in to that and how it is a window into where you need to go next. Even if a door closes, you are keenly aware that, hey, maybe that wasn't for me. And and when a door opens, you are keenly aware of this is for me. This is an example of those things lining up that would normally never line up and it's up to you to go. And I think without that visualization, it makes it very easy to miss out. I would love your guys' thoughts. Do you think that we can manifest love or do we consider it manufacturing love? And what's the difference? Have you ever manifested love and how did you know? once your manifestations came true. Share with me in the comments or write in at hey, what were you saying at gmail.com. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you, Chef Steve Pagonis for the question. <laughs> Forgive the ADHD rant. I'm very curious on your thoughts and I will see you guys in the next one.